So hi everyone and welcome to the Tidy Transcriptomics Workshop. My name is Maria Doyle and I work in bioinformatics education at the Peter McCallum Cancer Centre in Melbourne, Australia. And the co-creator of this workshop and also the creator of some of the packages we're going to use and also the co-presenter of the demo part of the workshop is Stefano Mangiola. And he's a postdoc at the Walter and Eliza Hall Institute in Melbourne, Australia. Okay, so I'm going to start now with sharing my screen. Oh, and just to mention, if you have questions, you can put them in the polls section on the workshop website on the conference page, and Stefan is going to be looking there. And there's also a chat there. But yeah, please use the polls if you have questions. Okay, I'm going to start sharing my screen. So on the workshop um, website for the conference, there's a link to the material um, where all the packages and material is being hosted in the okay so this is being hosted um in the cloud you can get the link at the workshop uh, website and you can either follow along with me or it, there's also time in the second part of this session where you can try out the material okay so when you log into that site you should be seeing this our studio and if you look in the files pane there's the vignettes folder and if you click in there, it's this tidy transcriptomics file that I'm going to be going through today. So if you click and open that, you should see the workshop material here. Okay, so why tidy transcriptomics? Because some of you might be aware that there are methods for analyzing RNA sequencing data in, in R in Bioconductor packages such as LIMA, EDGAR, and DSeq2. Well, one reason for using tidy transcriptomics is that it um, follows the tidy data standard. So if you've used tidyverse, it follows that standard of organizing data, where every variable is a column and every observation is a row. And an advantage of tidy transcriptomics is that it provides easy to understand vocabulary for RNA sequencing analysis. So the functions are easy to understand names. And importantly, the data structure remains consistent with tidyverse as standard manipulation and visualization functions. Okay, so the packages we're gonna use in this workshop are new packages created in the last year by Stefano, co-presenter here. The main one we'll be using is the tidy bulk package. And we'll also be seeing the uh, tidy heat map package. Tidy bulk is available in Bioconductor and Tidy heat map is available in CRAN. And these are the topics we're going to cover in this workshop today. So it's going to be exploring some RNA sequencing data, some dimensionality reduction clustering, differential gene expression analysis, and some data visualization. And the only prerequisites for this workshop are that you have some familiarity with RStudio and some Tidyverse. And there's some background reading mentioned here and for an R intro using Tidyverse that this is um, can be a follow on from. And today's session is 55 minutes. So the first part is a 30 minute demo shared by myself and Stefano. And then there'll be 25 minutes where you can ask questions, try out the code. And there's some exercises if you want to do those. Okay. So, um, just in case you're not familiar with RNA sequencing analysis. Um, okay, so this is a little diagram of the steps for analyzing RNA sequencing data, starting with your reads, mapping to a reference genome, counting how many reads you have per gene. And then this is the parts that we're going to be looking at in this workshop using tidy bulk. So the data exploration and the differential expression analysis. Okay, and for this demo, I'm going to be running the chunks and then so running these pieces of code and then explaining what's happening. So first, I'm going to load in the uh, packages we're going to use today. So these ones are Tidyverse core packages. And then these are the two uh, tidy bulk and tidy heat map packages created by Stefano. And um, some other little packages we'll use. And the data that we're using today comes from the airway bioconductor package. And this has eight RNA-seq samples from 
human airway smooth muscle cells. And they are, the eight samples come from four cell lines. Each one has a treated sample and an untreated sample with um, dexamethasone. And we're going to perform differential expression of the treated versus untreated samples. Okay, so after we're going to load in the airway data. And then we're first thing we're going to do is convert it into um, a tibble, which is a tidyverse table format. And we do that using tidybulk. That creates the table for us and adds some descriptions for tidybulk to use. And then we can have a look at what that looks like. So I'm just typing the name of the object I've created. So as you can see, it's a table format. And here we have our, our gene IDs. We have our sample IDs and we have our counts. And the other columns we're going to be using here are the cell. So this tells us which cell line the sample's from and also the DEX column, which tells us whether the samples are untreated or treated. Okay, and we're just going to do a little bit of um, formatting of the data. So what I'm going to do is remove this. All the sample IDs have this prefix SRR1039. And then the following part is the unique sample identifier. So I'm going to strip off that. And I can do that using a standard tidyverse mutate function, which adds a new column and using the string remove to strip off that prefix. Next thing I'm going to do is to add the um, get gene symbols. So I can do that very easily using tidybulk's um, uh, tidybulk's ensemble to symbol uh, function, and that works for human and mouse. So that will get me my. If I move along, yeah, I've got my gene symbols now for my ensemble gene IDs, and we can, we'll use these in some of the plots. And a nice thing about Tidyverse and, and tidy, the tidy bulk packages we're using is that we can link the different functions we're using with the pipe operator and the benefits. And so that's shown here. So this is running the same steps I've already performed, except chaining them together with the pipe. The benefits being that we create less temporary variables, less typing is required, and it's more easy to see the steps. So you can see here we've loaded the data converted to the tidyable table format, uh, stripped off the sample prefix, and then got our gene symbols. Okay. <clears throat> so now we move to the actual RNA that was formatting the data. So now we move to RNA sequencing analysis. And one of the steps we do there is we filter out genes that have low counts, low abundance, because they're not informative. <clears throat> And we can do that, Tidybulk does that automatically for us in the functions that we're going to see, scale abundance and test differential abundance, automatically perform the filtering. So as well as filtering, we normalize our counts. And what that means is we scale the counts to remove any differences that aren't interesting. These can be due to differences in numbers of reads or composition. And we do this, we can do this with Tidybulk using the um, easy to understand name, scaling abundance. And we, for this function, we supply to the factor of interest, the column that has contains the groups. And that's because it uses the edge R method for filtering. Okay, so after running the scaling function, we should see we've got some columns added at the end. So we have a column called count scaled that contains the counts we've just scaled. And we also have this column lowly abundant, which is, um, indicates which samples are going to be filtered or not for the low abundance that I mentioned earlier. Okay. And because um, Tidybulk integrates nicely with the Tidyverse um, packages. We can um, take our scaled counts and um, pipe it into the standard Tidyverse filter function to remove those lowly expressed genes and also to other Tidyverse functions such as pivot longer to reformat it and ggplot to make some plots and also take advantage of the really handy um, ggplot facet wrapping to, which enables us to easily create multiple plots. 
So what I'm doing here is making some density plots of the counts before and after scaling to see how the distributions look. So as you can see here, um, the scaling has um, helped improve, make the distributions more similar. And as you can see, it didn't take that many lines of code to do that. And it also is familiar code if you're used, used to using Tidyverse. So that's something nice that Tidybulk enables that integration. And um, just to compare, so this would be the way to generate those density plots above using um, Tidyverse and Tidybulk. And you can see in comparison to um, base R method to generate similar density plots, there's a lot less code involved in the um, tidy bulk and tidyverse method. Okay, so another plot we usually make with RNA sequencing analysis is a, a principal component plot or a MDS plot. And we do this as an important quality control step. So we, we want to see, are there any outliers in the data? Is there any swap samples? Or how does the data look? Are our replicates grouping together? So tidy bulk enables performing um, PCA or MDS using its reduced dimensions function. And when we run that, we get um, by default outputs for the first two principal components. And we can see the fractional variance for each. And I can have a look at what that data, what that output actually looks like. So here we see that we have our, we still have our original table in tidy data standard format, and we have an additional two columns added to the end for PC1 and PC2. Um, but as you can see, this ha has one row for every gene and every sample. If we just want the sample information, so one row for each of the eight samples with the PC information, we can use Tidybulk's pivot sample for that. So here now we have, we're just looking at the sample information with the PCs. And we can take that um, information and again, simply pipe it into standard ggplot uh, syntax and create a scatter plot or a P, uh, to produce the PCA plot. And again, we can take advantage of ggplot's nice way of plotting, but we can color our samples by the, whether they're treated or untreated, giving it the DEX column name. And we can also easily create different shapes for the different cell lines to indicate which one they are. And take advantage of tidyverse friendly GG repel package and use that to add our sample names. Okay, and from that, then we can see that uh, PC1, the main source of variation, separates our samples into treated and untreated, which is what we're hoping to see. And we can also see that PC2, the second greatest source of variation, is separating the different cell lines. So we can see the square here, here, is this cell line here. So that cell line is a bit different to the others. Okay, our, um, a complement to uh, principal component analysis is to perform hierarchical clustering. And we can, to do this, <clears throat> people often select the most variable genes in the data set because you need to um, have a small set of genes to use to, to do this, to create the heat map. And Tidybulk has a nice function called keep variable that enables selecting the most variable genes. So here I'm selecting the top 500. And then from that, we can again, using the pipe, nicely um, create a heat map. And this is using tidy heat map. And we can simply pass it in which columns contain our annotation information, and those will get added to our plot. So this is what we get. So we have our eight samples, and we have our annotations for whether they're treated or untreated with DEX and which cell line they're from. And with this hierarchical clustering, again, we can see the treated and untreated samples grouped together, except for this cell line, again, is, um, is a bit different. Okay, and just to compare the um, tidy, tidy bulk code above, you can see to a base R method of doing creating a similar heat map. Again, you can see there's less code and less variables um, needed to type. 
Okay, so after we've checked that our data looks good, the next thing we're going to do is actually do our perform our differential expression testing. And for that, we're going to use TidyBulk's test differential abundance method. Um, so I'll explain what's happening here. So here I'm taking our original tidy bulk tibble and I'm giving it to uh, tidy, tidy bulk's test differential abundance. And this is going to perform the filtering and the scaling that I mentioned before. And we also give it a formula, which is similar to what you would give, say, edge R, because this um, test differential abundance is actually using edge R at the back end at the moment and probably other methods in the future. And um, we, so here I'm saying I want to compare the treated and untreated. So I give it the DEX column. And I'm also giving it a secondary, uh, I'm taking into account the variation due to the cell line. So adding that as an additional factor. And we can also specify what comparison we're interested in. So here I'm saying that I'm interested in the DEX column treated group versus the DEX column untreated group. And this little thing here then is just to say we don't want the contrast name in the column headers for the plots that we're going to make. And we can have a look at that output. Okay, so again, we, we, ha we have our same table that we started with. And now we have columns added at the end for the log fall change. And we've got p-value, FDR, so our adjusted p-value, and also a column of significant, which is indicating whether our gene is less than 0.05 FDR. So, and if we just want the table of differentially expressed genes, if we don't want this one row um, for every sample, we can use TidyBook's pivot trans transcript to get that information. Um, so that will give us, instead of our large table, just one row for every gene. And so to compare again, if you want, you can see that the tidy bulk way of generating the differentially expressed analysis requires a lot less code and a lot less variables compared to a standard edge R analysis. Okay, and if you want to make uh, a, produce a table um, of differentially expressed genes that you can say open in Excel or something, you can do that using the standard uh, tidyverse write underscore TSB. Okay, and um, a couple of other things you could do is you could count how many differential expressed genes there are, and these are using standard tidyverse functions, not creating any new ones here. So we use the filter to say we want to um, just grab the genes that are significant, and we use tidyverse summarize then to count how many distinct genes we have. Okay, so we've got over 4,000 uh, differentially expressed genes here at uh, FDR less than 0.05. And if we want, then we can extract the top genes, the ones with the smallest p-values, and we'll do that because we'll use them in some plots below. So here again, what's happening is I'm extracting that table of differentially expressed genes and then I'm using the standard tidyverse sorting function arranged to sort by p-value, and then I'm using the standard head function to grab the top six. I'm just taking top six as, a, as an example. And then we can extract the symbols for these genes because we'll use those in the plot. So I can just grab these symbols here, and I can do that by using standard tidyverse pull function to pull those out. And that will give me my six gene symbols to use in the plot. Okay, at this point, I'm going to now pass over to Stefano to finish off the demo. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm going to finish this workshop showing you a few examples of how um, the tidy representation of transcriptomic data is convenient uh, for visualization, uh, as is uh, its interface really well with ggplot and its friends. I will show you here a few examples. Uh, we start from uh, Volcano Plots. Uh, which are um, really informative plots uh, to gather information about our uh, hypothesis. It is visualized mainly the association between the magnitude of change here as uh, x-axis, log fall change, and the significance here as p-value. To produce a basic uh, volcano plot is pretty easy. 
Uh, we filter for um, highly abundant transcripts and we use ggplot to produce a scatter plot. And again, we color by uh, significance that is conveniently uh, a column in our data sets. And um, ggplot is particularly good because uh, allows to use um, arbitrary scales and uh, we provide log 10 reverse scale that allows um, us to uh, plot the actual p-value so the user will get in the, in the visualization the actual p-value with the a scale that would be um, negative uh, log 10. And so without um, the need to transform uh, the data for the user. Uh, from going to this simple visualization to a visualization that can be a publication already um, is pretty simple, adding few lines of code. Here, what we are doing, we are adding few more aesthetics uh, to increase the uh, information content and the clarity of the, of the plot. Again, we filter for highly abundant transcript for visualizing. We redefine our significant column as well um, according to the absolute log for change uh, equals or greater than two. And uh, we keep uh, gym names just for those who, um, um, that we are interested on in visualizing. Again, we produce a scatter plot here. Um, and uh, we add few more aesthetics, for example, transparency and size according with significance. Um, and we use again text repel, uh, which is a plugin built by the community for um, uh, ggplot that allows to plot text on the, on the plot without overlapping with any element. And again, uh, here is, uh, is the convenience of interfacing with Tidyverse as the com uh, community is really active in developing software for it. Uh, again, we scale our uh, y-axis and we, um, we pick up uh, our two colors, uh, red and black, and also define uh, the size range we are interested in um, according with significance again. Another example of really um, an important plot is a strip chart. Uh, this is basically a box plot with the um, transcript abundance data overlaid on top. And again, it uh, provides us uh, more information about our hypothesis. In this, uh, we have um, transcript abundance on the y-axis and our treatments on, on the x-axis here. It's really simple. Um, we want to visualize our uh, top uh, rank genes, the first six in this case. Uh, again, we produce a box plot where we color by treatment and we overlay our uh, transcript abundance using the jitter function that it's, uh, it allows to not uh, overplot um, data. Um, again, um, Faceting uh, a plot with ggplot is pretty straightforward uh, and this function is pretty powerful and it's convenient especially because uh, transcripts is a column of our data set so we can easily facet according to transcript. Um, again, we scale the y-axis. We don't need to transform uh, the uh, transcript abundance in order to plot it. We, we can just uh, um, choose the right scale and um, communicate to the user the actual uh, read counts is the scale, uh, but could be row counts if we choose um, as or adjusted counts if we had, had done some adjustments. Uh, the last example, as I will show you, is um, again the convenience of interfacing with Tidyverse uh, is using the um, plugin ggplotly uh, within the package plotly that allows with one line of code conveniently to transform any gplot in its um, interactive version. And so you can see here that we can query um, specific data points, for example, visualizing which sample, which sample are, are they are coming from. And um, we can also zoom and pan, uh, is particularly helpful uh, where we have a more complex plot. This is still pretty simple. So to conclude this work, uh, I will read here a few points uh, regarding the tidy approach to uh, the representation and analysis, analysis of transcriptomic data. 
and as well uh, about the an an analysis itself. So, uh, first of all, RNA sequencing data can be represented and analyzed in a tidy way using tidy bulk and tidyverse. With the modularity offered by piping uh, that tidy bulk and tidyverse are um, mostly based on, we don't need to create uh, variables unless an object is used more than once. Uh, this is uh, confers robustness to the code and arguably one of the most backbone habits that we can have when we do interactive analysis is assigning values to the same variable, for example, more than once through the workflow. So a lot of those temporary variables that are needed because the data manipulation is too complex, for example, to express, um, are not needed here as um, tidyverse and tidybulk offer powerful tool for that. Uh, the principle of tidy transcriptomics are to interface as much as possible with a commonly known manipula manipulation and visualization tool rather than creating custom functions. For example, sometimes I've been asked, uh, for example, when we produce this plot that is good looking and informative, why don't we um, build a custom function for it? And the principle is we, don't, we never know what the user uh, requirements are and the study requirements are. Uh, and we all, uh, always end up uh, producing our custom plots with our custom aesthetics. And so ggplot really is a great middle ground between uh, flexibility and uh, code burden. And so interfacing with it um, for us is a really uh, smart choice. Uh, then about the analysis themselves, we have seen that uh, some of the key steps in our RNA sequencing analysis are filtering low, lowly abundant transcripts, adjusting for differences uh, in sequence depth and uh, performing uh, differential expression analysis. Uh, dimensionality reductions such as PCA or MDS um, are really important and informative for um, data exploration and uh, other um, plots such as density plot, volcano plots, strip charts and heat maps uh, are really important for uh, visualizing and gathering more information about our uh, hypothesis. Now, I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. This last part of the workshop will be dedicated to um, questions that you can write uh, on the pool function, and was, as well exercises that you can perform. Some of those exercises are pretty straightforward, and some of them are more difficult, so you can pick uh, yours in this um, remaining time. These exercises will be performed on uh, the Pazilla dataset that it contains uh, Drosophila melanogaster um, uh, information and um, includes samples that have been uh, treated and some control samples, and you can import the dataset uh, with this code here and the tidy bulk uh, call will convert in, into a table. All right, thanks a lot for the attention and I give it to Maria if she has to um, add something. Thanks, Stefano. Uh, I was gonna say, I could maybe read out some of the questions that have come up in the poll. I see um, for you, the top question is one about tidy bulk itself. So yeah, you're free to work on the exercises and I'll ask Stefano some of these questions. So do you see that one? Looking at the documentation, I see that you re-export a lot of dplyr functions like mutate, filter full join. Can you say a bit more about what were the technical challenges implementing tidy bulk? Yes, so um, the tidy bulk data frame is, is basically a table. The only difference is that um, includes uh, some um, some attributes that memorize the column names. So you can use tidy bulk on the fly, just you have to specify the sample, transcript, and cons column names, or you can using the tidy bulk function to add that information on the background of your table. So in that case, um, unfortunately, um, it shouldn't be like this really, but most of tidyverse, um, you know, dplyr and uh, tidyr functions they strip attributes because in some case, when it were left joins, the, the decision rule to maintain attributes could be complicated. So some of those functions, they strip attributes. And so those uh, key column names uh, are forgotten. And so what, uh, what I had to do to ensure uh, kind of um, a, a streamlined and easy 
operation for the user is to, in case uh, your table is a tidyable table, you use those tidyverse functions. And the only thing I do is append that uh, information, that simply key column names uh, after the operation. So it's quite straightforward. Uh, it was a bit of work, but um, the framework is really simple in this case. Okay, cool. Thanks. And did you want to answer the next question then? Does scaling the read count um, a standard practice and must be practiced in every RNA sequencing? To remove, uh, uh, yes, uh, you need scaling to, um, to compensate for different uh, sequencing depth of your samples. And uh, in tidy bulk, uh, you can do it explicitly. Uh, and this will, uh, the scale will be performed on abundant transcript and apply on all transcripts. So you can visualize scale low transcript as well, as well if you want. And most of the functions that when you do scale, uh, they take the scale count if present and uh, differential um, transcript abundance analysis, uh, they scale the data using the framework of your choice could be HR on D62, and there is just an argument to specify. But yes, the answer is yes. yes. I think that question, though, is, is um, might be slightly mixing scaling and filtering. Scaling isn't removing the lowly expressed genes. Sorry, this is the third one I'm looking at still, that one. Um, uh, is it, uh, sorry, I lost Scaling is happening and filtering is happening as well. Two separate things. Just to clarify that third question there. And they're both usually yes. performed in RNA sequencing analysis. Yes, and so in the key operation, Tidyball performs both. Yep. And then do you see now question number two, Stefano, is it enough to include batch in the design formula for differential expression for removing batch effects, or would it be better to use external functions like remove batch effect lemma? Um, well, the, of the two, the force is it correct because you need to, uh, you need to have the, uh, right degrees of freedom, you cannot correct the data and then doing statistical inference. Uh, Tidyball has a function called uh, adjust abundance rather than scale abundance. And adjust abundance, it performs combat and, and you, you provide the, the formula as you would provide for combat and it does it for you. But that is mainly for visualization. So you have an idea what the statistical methods of differential expression can see in a way but the statistical inference must be done adding the batch to the to the formula not correcting um, explicitly and uh, um, the um, differential expression uh, function um, of tidyball by default um, uses the raw rate because most methods they do the scaling and you should put the covariates in the formula so Okay, great. Um, Stefano, another one. How does the abundant scaling of tidy bulk work? Um, the scaling is using, at the moment, a JAR uh, framework, and you can scale. The default method is TMM, but you can choose any methods that uh, a JAR uses. And um, for the interface, what the user see is the uh, scaling, scaling, param, uh, the scaling um, factors that have been inferred. So they are added to the table as information and as well a new column is added to the table that is count. If your count, may, uh, if your count column name is count, it will become a scaled count. And so you can compare uh, row count, scale count into uh, with visualization. With and as well, you adjust the data, you can compare that as well. Um, and next question, I think you might have answered it in the poll, but maybe it's worth just speaking it out as well. Is the tidy bulk code more compact because the path through the analysis is now clear, whereas when the original code was written, there were different paths that could be pursued? Um, yeah, this is partly true. So. Uh, Many of the paths we do, uh, they can be automated as they are not, you know, not for every path that we do, uh, there are multiple options. In some cases, there are multiple options. And the challenging of designing study work was to allow flexibility, but increasing simplicity. Of course, this is a balance, 
uh, but also through feedback of users. Um, I added more and more, for example, for differential transcript abundance, you are able to uh, define contrast and define many of the things uh, that you would define in a standard analysis uh, performing step by step. And for, um, let's say, uh, I would say all the function of TidyBolt, uh, you have the ellipsis um, uh, parameters, dot, dot, dots, and that would, that will pass parameters to the background, to the um, um, backend uh, function is using. So you can control, for example, if you are using principal component on the backend for uh, reducing the dimensions, then you can pass parameters to that function. Okay, next question. Is the differential analysis as flexible as Edge R in terms of design matrix, contrasts, reference, etc.? And then is there a plan to inc include also functional analysis, e.g. gene, ontology, GSEA? Thanks a lot. Yes, so thanks to user feedback, uh, the, the answer is yes. So you can do anything you can do with standard, uh, including what design metrics, contrasts, references, et cetera, yes. Um, and uh, most of the functions in the, they save as attributes, it's pretty easy to extract, it's just A-T-T-R, -A uh, the, the raw uh, results from PCA, from MBS, from uh, differential expression analysis and so on. So if you want to check that as well, you can easily extract it and go on from there or, or doing uh, further checks. Um, and uh, yeah, gene enrichment analysis is present in two functions. One is a test, um, test, uh, what's the name? Test, uh, uh, test gene enrichment. enrichment. Yeah, which, which uses ensemble GCA. Uh, that it's in a symbol of methods um, that summarize the results at the end to get more confidence about the, the overall results. And as well, I've added a test gene overrepresentation. Uh, that is a jargon um, used in some of the workshops that are linked into the documentation. And it just do uh, really, uh, literally gene set uh, enrichment analysis where you provide a set of genes, a list of genes. Um, yes, so those are present. Just trying to see the next question. Um, will it be possible in the future to have an option of do you see that DSEQ2 yeah. or Edge R in the back end for differential analysis? Edge R is already there, yeah? yeah. Um, no, the, yeah, DSEQ2 is, is there as well in the um, most updated version on GitHub and on the development of Biconductor. Um, but I've added recently, so I would, um, I expect there will be a bit of evolution, but um, I've used it already for comparative analysis. So DSIC2 is there as well. And if there is any DSIC2 expert, uh, I would be happy to receive feedback because I'm sure uh, things could be done better and I'm, uh, there are things that I might, I might be missing. Uh, next question. Hi, I'm new to Tidyverse, so this is probably a basic question. Is it possible to combine the Tidyverse pipeline with existing packages like SVA for surrogate variable analysis and also visualization packages like Enhanced Volcano? Hmm. Um, well, anything that in inputs a data set, it can be used. Okay, so the, the, the table we are using, either if includes information on the back end or not is simply a table from a, for any algorithm. Uh, so I'm not sure about those two, uh, but uh, wherever an algorithm inputs a data frame and you know you can access through column names and so and so on, it can it can be used. Cool. And is it a possible to apply TidyBulk to other types of data that also rely on differential coverage counts, e.g. DNA methylation from MedipSeq? Well, the data representation um, concept is for sure adaptable. Uh, and, um, and the table um, underlying principles for TidyBulk are 
um, a lot, uh, and there will be sparse rep data representation as well. So all the memory consumption of the table will decrease. Um, now, the framework is not there, for example, for methylation. What is missing is um, interfacing the algorithm with this system. Now, one suggestion I received from the Bioconductor community was really good, was to create um, a, a wrapper function where, user, uh, where actually the contributors and developer could put their function and uh, some explicit validation like I'm doing now on the back end could uh, check the, the compliance. And so you could insert, interface any function to that. At the moment, I have to do it, but I'm happy to, for sure, um, first of all, collaborate with people and uh, ac um, accept suggestions for expanding this. So, yeah. Okay, and I've missed a question. There's one, does a tidy book object stop you from doing silly things like removing individual cells in the gene by sample matrix? Uh, I mean, you can, so the tidyverse framework uh, is, you know, facilitates to avoid those things. For example, left joints and so on. You can, of course, delete rows, random rows in the data set. Uh, and uh, um, some of the function requires a non-sparse matrix, you know, underlying rectangular data structure. And so um, there are checks that will tell you uh, your data frame is not rectangular. Um, uh, in some case, you might missing information, uh, as I do, for example, when I, when I try to model uh, cell type signatures and so on, since I, I integrate a lot of data. And there are uh, easy function to filter uh, spark genes or to uh, impute spark genes or to, uh, um, to give a default value to missing, uh, I mean, not spark genes, I, I meant missing information. So you can mess up and Tidybulk will tell you that is messed up, but you can, uh, if actually some data is missing, you can impute them or you can fill them with custom values and so on. Okay, so there's, there's more questions in the poll. Um, I haven't seen another page, okay. Is there any intended complementary use of Tidybulk with the annotation resources described in the previous workshop or with ply ranges or working with ranges? Um, yes, so the previous workshop was 5 a.m. Uh, in Australia, <laughs> so unfortunately I missed it. Um, but uh, let's say, okay, ply ranges, um, yes, it, I see that uh, things are complementary. Um, for sure, the information can be easily integrated as being, uh, you know, a tidy representation for, for example, for uh, deep layer ranges. Um, I haven't had personally the, the use case, uh, but I see if you want to query, uh, you know, posi uh, the genomic position of different genes and, and, and more complex things that could be helpful. So the answer is likely yes, um, although hasn't, you know, is not, has, has not been implemented yet just because of lack of personal needs. So I'm, draw, I'm driven personally for what I'm familiar with. Uh, but again, I accept a suggestion and especially collaboration if someone wants to extend it. Another question, is count scaling similar, comparable to normalization using size factors in DSEQ2? Hmm. Um, I mean, uh, the, the, the thing is the, the scaling can um, infer the scaling factor in any way that the backend the backends allow. For example, there are different algorithms for in a, in a jar, which I'm slightly more familiar with. There are different algorithms to calculate the scaling factor. So you can choose the algorithm of choice. So uh, Tidybolt is, is not doing uh, anything by, uh, its own most of the times. It's just facilitating representing information. So the backend algorithms are backend that are published uh, online. And um, um, uh, as I added DSEQ2 to the differential transcript abundance analysis, um, 
the plan, especially if user want it, is to add other normal, other scaling or normalization, um, you know, routines on the backend, including the one used by DC2. Okay. Um, why is ensemble to symbol a verb in itself instead of a function called inside mutate? Uh, yes, I saw that question. I, I uh, let, actually I problem seeing all the questions. My scroll is through the website is not working properly. Um, so why? Uh, can you repeat the question again? The last part. So is instead of Right. Yeah, why is ensemble to symbol a function in its own right? Why isn't it done inside mutate? Inside mutate. I mean, it, it is a left join, but tidybulk stores a, a data frame of uh, conversion names. So you don't need to specify any species or anything. I mean, uh, why is not mutate? Uh, I mean, it would be a left join in this case because our uh, data points are pair sample transcripts. But if you add the data set, I mean, if you take from tidybulk in the data directory, if you go on GitHub, the, the you know, links between the two uh, um, transcript IDs, you can do it yourself. So, um, uh, ensemble to symbol is a pretty easy function on the back end. I hope that answers the question. Um, oops. What else? Oh, so we have a question. Mm, it might be a bit specific to the, an analysis though. So what full change cutoff should we take if we have a sample where we achieve a 50 to 60% of say an X gene silencing and confirmed by qPCR the same sample sequence. We have observed quite opposite results in cases of RNA seq, DE, and QP, QE, P, qPCR. I feel like that's um, not really a tidy bulk, tidy analysis. Question. Yeah, that goes really yeah. into um, it's more you know, about scientific the matters. Yeah. Uh, I can't even read the question. So this, um, but yeah, probably, you, you know. It's a question that requires seeing the data and, and a, a mm -hmm. bit of I think so. Yeah. thoughtful discussion. Okay. Can you run PCA for other higher dimensions other than PC1 and 2? And I see yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you just uh, there is redu reduce dimension, reduce dimension with the argument that is dimmed. And so you type your dimmed, uh, your max dimensional, uh, the dimension that you want. And those dimensions will be added to the to your data frame. By default, is is two. But, um, we haven't we haven't showed it here, but on the tidybulk uh, readme and also vignette, there is the example where you can a really good plot is uh, a really good um, functionality is um, ggpair uh, from ggali. Um, package where you can plot all versus all um, reduced dimension and it show you density plots that are even more informative than scatter plots in my opinion. So, yeah. Um, what else? How does the size of tidy bulk objects and speed of computation compare with their edge R counterparts? Um, yeah, so in the, um, yeah, there is not a preprint, but uh, in the article that will uh, make it public uh, soon, we have tested that uh, for the speed. And for most of routines um, and processes, for example, uh, reduced dimension, the code regarding reduced dimension, the code needed for a differential expression analysis and so on are comparable. Although there is a cost uh, to to some processes are going on on the back end of tidy board, uh, but is is not huge compared to the time you save uh, in uh, you know in bugs that won't happen in your codes and in code simplicity. Uh, but there will be that data available soon. For memory, of course, the table is is uh, is in comparison inefficient to 
having separated uh, data frames um, as has information redundancy in that, but using factors um, helps a lot. And um, for most application, it really doesn't matter with the personal computers we have now. It really doesn't matter. Um, if you have a server you're working on, you, I, I, now I use Studyball for anything that I find convenient, um, analysis of full TCGA and analysis of uh, huge data integration of uh, transcriptomic signatures and so on. Uh, so I would say, I mean, test it by yourself. Uh, there is some seconds of cost in terms of cost, but um, the hope, I mean, the point is that the convenience is much, much bigger than that. Um, and Stephanie, you've kind of answered part of this before. Is there any way to use DEC2 function or, or do, you want, do you want to say something else? Yes. So uh, we are, just to point out, we are continuously working on optimizing uh, the execution of Tadibol. For example, there might be a way of um, manipulating data that are quite inefficient that we are finding out. Uh, and so also your help, feel free to uh, post issues about even performance uh, that we can prioritize in improving that. But it's a, it's a work in progress. So we are keep uh, improving that aspect. Go on. Okay. Um, question is, any way to use DEC2 function or to import a DEC object? So you've kind of answered. Uh, yes. So DEC2 is now in the, in the framework. Uh, for import, yes, this is an exact question I received yet another time. I wonder if the same person. Um, so um, you can import summarized experiments and it will convert it to a table for you. It will understand what's the, you know, sample and transcript wise information and so on. Um, for an HR object or a, D a DC2 object, um, the answer is uh, not at the moment. There is not a um, unwrapper function, uh, but uh, there is um, BioBroom, which I haven't used extensively, but is really good to transform a lot of these, uh, you know, statistical inference objects into a table that you can, then you can operate tidy bulk on. It's really simple, but you might have to integrate sample information and so on. But for example, if you have a summarized experiment object, you just call tidy bulk and, and it will be converted into a table. And sorry, actually, something we haven't said that all function of tidy bulk uh, performs uh, the same if applied on a summarized experiment. So our focus is a table, is table, is a data frames, but you can apply all those functions to summarize experiment and you will add information to that object. Well, that is our time for today. So thank you everybody for attending.